everybody, Jane here, and today I am reviewing the book The Man Who Wouldn't Stand Up by Jacob M. Apple. This is a book about a man who is taking his nephew to a baseball game when we start out. They're at the game and there's an announcement overhead, will everybody please rise? You know, we're going to be playing America the Beautiful to remember some recent deaths of soldiers of local soldiers, I believe. <clears throat> and Arnold, our main character, chooses not to stand up. At the time the decision is made, it is more of an impulsive thing. It's not necessarily like he had a real political agenda, but the camera comes to him and he sticks his tongue out of the camera because, you know, it's looking at him not standing up and everybody around him standing up. He gets home, this is playing on the news, people are suddenly protesting at his house, and his life is completely out of whack and disordered. This guy is a... He studies plants. He owns a greenhouse, and his big thing is just plants. He doesn't have a lot of social skills, and his life basically completely catastrophically falls apart because of this decision to not stand during America the Beautiful and to stick his tongue out at the camera that panned to him. <clears throat> so I gave this a 4 out of 5. It's very entertaining. It's a satire. For a lot of things I really, really loved about it. I wasn't sure going in how I was going to feel about it because sometimes books that are political can get a little heavy-handed. I didn't feel that this particularly did. I thought it was a lot of fun to just go around the journey and to follow Arnold. And I really, uh, I really liked Arnold. He was a... He's a fun character, and his thought processes made sense, and he's not, he's not deep, he doesn't have a deep political agenda, okay? So he's not, like, hammering you with his thoughts of why this is the right thing to do or not to do. He just, he's mostly just wants to garden and grow his plants and not be bothered by crap. I will say I liked the first three quarters of the book a little better than the last quarter of the book. And I am going to do a slight spoiler section to kind of describe why and to give a little more detail about what happened throughout the book. But for now, I'm going to say I really enjoyed Arnold as a character. Most of the storyline, it was a little over the top and a little zany and crazy, but as a satire, I knew that going in and to expect that and it was entertaining again if you don't take it super super seriously this isn't a book you want to go into to take it super seriously i feel like i feel like it's more of a this is interesting this is entertaining it is making a point there are also some really good quotes and i do want to talk about those because i really love there's a character named bonnie who is his next door neighbor and she has a really cool way of looking at the world but i kind of look at it that way too in some ways, and I want to read you this quote about her because I just love this. If he took one stance, she'd choose the opposite, merely to demonstrate that the opposing side also had merit, that our social universe was entirely constructed and no philosophical principle was truly sound. So there is a lot of things like that in the book, but it's fun. And I loved that they bring up those points of things like, you know, what's right, what's wrong, and how a lot of times there's not good solid answers for much of it. Another really cool quote from this book is, every choice made sense from some vantage point. And I do think that this book brings up a lot of good interesting philosophical points. The main negative that I can go into without spoilers is that this book has a little bit of odd formatting. So I I. I should have told you already. Um, this was sent to me by the author. I won it from a library things giveaway. So I don't know. This could potentially be an arc. I'm not sure. It doesn't say arc or proof anywhere on it, but that is possible. But since I'm not sure if it's an arc or proof, I did want to mention the formatting is a little weird in case you would pick up this book on my recommendation. And just to give you an idea of what I mean by weird formatting, like you have the end of a chapter here, and then you have like this whole blank page before the next chapter. And I don't, this wasn't a section break or anything. At least if it was, I didn't catch that it was. So uh, there is a little bit of just odd formatting in the book. So if you pick it up, just be aware of that, that 
if this is a proof and I was sent that, maybe the formatting's been taken care of, but it is a little bit possible that the formatting's weird. So if you pick up the book, just know that's the case. It didn't impact my enjoyment of the book at all. I am not generally bothered by those things unless it's really, really crazy, but I know some people are. I know some people that kind of thing might really ruin the enjoyment of your read. So I'm going to go ahead and get into some spoilers. And the spoilers are mostly like the things that I loved about the first half of the book and that started to fall flat for me on the second. They are plot point related, so they are spoilers of like what happens after he sticks his tongue out and starts becoming a, basically a, a societal pariah. So if, um, if you're wanting to read the book, you might not want to listen to the spoiler section just because I am going to be talking about kind of plot point stuff that happens. But I did want to discuss in more detail what didn't work for me and what did and why certain things started to fall flat. For all I can say, I really enjoyed this book. I do recommend it. Again, if you're going to take it as a satire and if you're going to be able to appreciate the nuance of it. I do think this is right for a certain audience, but is probably not the right book for everybody. If you're leaving now, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, check out my social media. <clears throat> All right, spoilers in three, two, one. All right, so after Arnold has everybody showing up at his house, one of the people that shows up is a girl who said that she'd done an interview with him. She wants to do an interview with him. She's a journalist. And he starts having romantic slash sexual feelings for this girl. And at some point, he runs away and hides at her house. And I really was engaged and thought all this was interesting and fun. And they're kind of, he's kind of developing feelings for her, at least a desire to cheat on his wife with her. And his relationship with his wife is kind of complex. And so I really enjoyed the book basically as he's leaving, realizing he can't stay where he is, and going to this girl's house and exploring his feelings for her and being a fugitive at her house. He finds out, though, that she had ruined his garden in a rage. And so all that ends up being like he can't forgive her for that and he runs off. After that happens, the book started to kind of not be for me as much. Early in the book, we're introduced to this guy. I don't remember now what they call him, but he makes people take off their clothes. And he steals their clothes and runs around Central Park. And he's a little bit of a crazy guy, obviously. And Arnold runs into him and kind of joins him for a while. And I didn't, I didn't like this. It really didn't work for me. Arnold, on one level, it kind of makes sense to the plot because Arnold uses this guy to help him get back at some of the people who were wronging him in the earliest part of the book. But I just, I couldn't get on board with some of the stuff that was happening and with Arnold teaming up with a guy. Now, the guy kind of convinces Arnold to team up with him because he's been using one of Arnold's books on plant, on edible plants to survive in his current, like, situation. Like, the guy's not, he's living in kind of an underground bunker type thing. He's not living, he's not living in a healthy, happy way. So, while it was interesting, it was a little too over the top for me, and I didn't enjoy it as much as I did the earlier part of the book. And while I understood it, I just, it didn't really jive with me the way that the stuff up to that point had. And then I didn't, I guess I kind of didn't really get the end. So after this nude guy, Arnold goes after this big public figure who has been making his life miserable. And the nudist guy tells him not to. And then Arnold does it. And then the, the nudie guy is like, kicks him out. Like he ends the friendship, kicks him out. And so Arnold doesn't know what to do, so he goes home. And he's like, I'm going to apologize to people. And I'm like, you have been running around. Like, up until that point, up until the point where he joined this nudist guy and was 
terrorizing other people, you know, he probably could have just gotten up and been like, I should have stood for that. He hadn't really broken any laws. Not standing up for America the Beautiful is not against the law. Like, it may be a politically bad move, but he hadn't broken really any laws up to that point. He joined this criminal and is terrorizing people and taking their clothes and stuff, and he's now a criminal. So he's not at a point where he can just apologize and it be okay. So I wasn't really sure how I felt about the end, and we don't really know what happens. We don't know if, if he gets jail time or, or what. But yeah, I, I really was all for what was happening up until he joined this criminal and started terrorizing people and like getting back at them. Because here's the other thing too, like up until that point, Arnold's a fairly mild mannered, mannered person. He just he just seems to be very mild. He just wants to go garden in his garden. And he I don't know, like I I didn't necessarily feel like it was out of character because he's getting a little more out of control and intense as all this happens. Like when we first meet him, he's very much like an introverted garden, he just gardener. He just wants to be in his garden, like an introverted scientist. But he becomes, he changes through the course of the story. But I felt like that was maybe too much change for me. And having him go out and do criminal acts and then be like, okay, well, maybe I'm gonna go to jail and stuff. I'm like, you took everything so much further than it needed to be taken. You could have, at the beginning, anytime, obviously we wouldn't have a book if that happened, stood up and been like, hey, sorry. You could have run off with a girl and, that, and you know, come back to the apartment and been like, hey, I'm done hiding. I almost had an affair and that was obviously not a good idea. We should probably talk to my wife about that. Anything. But then once he became a criminal, he became a criminal. And like, now you're apologizing, hoping nothing's going to happen, but you've been stealing people's clothes at gunpoint. Not okay. This book was entertaining. I didn't necessarily love the end of it. And, and the very, very end was fairly ambiguous. Like, we don't know what happens. He, we just hear that he's going to go apologize. I don't think we have anything beyond that. He's fantasizing about what his life is going to be like afterwards. And I don't think, like, what he thinks is going to happen is a reality of what's going to happen. Because it's obviously, it, it just, I don't think things can turn out good for him. But he has this idea that they're just going to forgive him and that he and his wife are going to run off and have a ton of kids. There's one other thing I did want to point out that I didn't write in my note, but that I'm remembering now that we're talking about it. I loved the infertility rep in this. His wife has infertility. She really wants children. She wants to adopt children. Now, one thing that I think he didn't think through, and I don't think they pointed it out as much as it should have been pointed out in this book, is that, you know... By the end of things, they're not going to be able to adopt children. If you're if you're a major criminal who has been on the news and stuff and has this reputation, it's not like you can go. I, I feel like Children's Services is not really going to give you a child. There's background checks and stuff. But, you know, he acts like this has not just ruined his wife's life. But she had been, prior to his craziness, she would kind of been trying to convince herself that it was better to not have children and that she was just one of the lucky ones that couldn't. And then, kind of as all this is going on, she starts to realize that she does want a child and talks to Arnold about it. <clears throat> and he's not really sure how to deal with any of that. And I think some of that may have fed into his acting out and being crazy. But um, at the end, he's sitting here talk, thinking about, oh, all the children him and his wife are going to adopt, I believe. And it's like, well, clearly that's not going to happen. Let me see if I can find it here. Until that moment, he waited stoically, enduring their insults, and thought of the army of children he intended to raise with Judith. And this is as he's going up to apologize for the things that he's done. And again, if all he'd done was just not stand, that would have been totally fine. He made the news for something stupid, it would have been fine. But he's now been running around, stealing people's clothes, and kind of being a terrorist. Like, not a terrorist as in harming people, but stealing people's clothes, leaving them naked, degrading them, doing all this stuff. Nobody's going to give him children. But he just thinks that everything's going to be fine and that he didn't just ruin his wife's life. So I did want to bring out that point. Like, he did a lot more damage, I think, than he thought he did. And I didn't appreciate that and his unrealisticness about where he could go from there. But I did like the infertility rep in this. <clears throat> 
right, guys, this is Jane. Thank you so much. Uh, talk to you next time. Bye.